Come on, yeah. come on. We'll leave, we'll go get to work. Come on, yeah. oh, get, get, get out of here. Everybody wants to know. Wants to know what? Pricing. Oh God, we're working on it. <laughs> Modular <laughs> desk pricing. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking of that, I don't see you guys a lot. How are you? I'm great. All yeah, right. Ah, I need a haircut though. Yeah, really? Same. I can't have it all. Look at it. It's crazy. Weighing out. Yeah, my wife doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> Let me do a little Bob Ross. Paint a pretty little picture of where we came from. So about two years ago, we launched a little Kickstarter, shut up. We launched a little Kickstarter known as the Modular Game Table and it was one of the biggest Kickstarters of all time. And it almost killed the company. Probably a fair way to put it, maybe. Yeah. We lost a lot of money. Millions of dollars. When we launched it, the world had not totally spiraled into nonsense. Like we launched it and then all of a sudden it was like, you can't get machines, you can't get equipment, labor costs, shipping costs. Went through the through the roof, and we still underpriced it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, things are so much more expensive than they were. Spaghetti at the grocery store, like a year ago, was a dollar for like a box. It's a dollar seventy nine right now. Yeah. That's fucking insane. That's an eighty percent increase. Any energy drink, three nineteen at Cumberland Farms. Really? Yeah. No more ninety nine cent uh, Arizona, Arizona iced teas. <laughs> yeah, that was that. We know it was bad. Hey, made this. Look at this guy. He actually, he works. We're talking about modular game table. Oh, cool. How great it was. It was? Is. Was? Absolutely. Are yeah, we done? <laughs> <laughs> Back to prices. <laughs> Let me make a statement, which is that this modular desk is, in my opinion, the best product Wormwood has ever come out with, period. Including, wow. that's my opinion. Hmm. If I could have one product, yep. it would be the modular desk. Like, I don't oh, know. it's kick ass. Yeah, the comments are like, oh, you guys did this. Like, we didn't need to go so hard, but we did. We went pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> and it is gonna have to be priced somewhere. Like, I don't know. I don't wanna be in a situation where we go out of business. Yeah, we don't want an, <laughs> we, we don't want MGT 2.0. I don't think we could survive another MGT experience. No. We have to yeah. dig out from the MGT experience, which by the way, is going fine. Like we can sort of see the finish line on that project, yeah. but I don't want to go through that experience again. But at the same time, I hate charging a lot of money. I like to make people happy and <laughs> low prices make people happy. How do you feel about your workers? <laughs> <laughs> I want to charge as little as possible while maintaining a profit margin that is acceptable that can lead to higher wages for workers and just make things generally solvent. What is the starting price on a modular desk? A fixed frame with a cherry top, $1,750. And how do you feel about that? It feels pretty good. The accessories are gonna add a lot of money. These desks get really expensive when you start loading them up with the actual Cool, innovative stuff. I, I don't think adding the sit stand option. This the sit stand is going to be a two hundred and fifty dollar premium. That seems super reasonable. Yeah. Starting buy in for a standing desk or the sit stand desk version is two grand. It feels a little high to me. It does feel high. We did do some actual like market research. People that were making desks just like a slab of solid wood on a sit stand frame starting at $2,300 cherry. There's no storage, no cable management, there's no rails for accessories. Yeah, it's, it's, it like has nothing. I called Dale in here because I think I, I think Dale is the opposite of me. Because of everybody I've talked to, Dale is sort of the instinctually the most aggressive in pricing. And it might be because he's got experience and, and <laughs> wisdom and knowledge. <laughs> what do you think we should be charging for the modular game table? And then let's talk Ooh. about the mm. modular desk. The medium maple, right? Sure. That's the cheapest. I think it should be $2,500. What is it currently? A thousand something, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Explainify yourself. Like, so why, it why is, are you so radically wrong? Because it's too wrong. much value for the money. No one else manufactures a table that has expansion capability that that has for that price point, right? It has more real lumber in it than almost, I think, any other table yeah. of that size 
produce currently. And I've looked. I've gone to people that are making tables and they have half the fiber in it. It's half as durable, I guess you can argue, and we're giving it away for like a third of the price they're selling it for. Yeah. And it's still a better table. So at 2,500 bucks, you are still getting a better table than you can buy from just about anybody else. I mean, that's you look at our competitors, and right now we are selling a table that's cheaper than theirs. And a lot of our, it's like gum wood that's stained without any features, and they're charging more than we are. It's insane. Is anybody here concerned? So if we say, hey, you're gonna get into the system from let's say at a low of 1750, and realistically, when you walk away, you're probably gonna be 2000, 2500 for the desk, right? If that is the entry point, is anybody consume, concerned about the volume? You know, we're just not gonna have units to push through. Yes. Yeah. I think there's a scenario where we price them really well, we're running a really, really profitable manufacturing company, and we have to lay off 25% of our production workers. Like, that's a very realistic scenario. I, I think you may, if you price it aggressively, you may make more profit making less tables. If this is priced low-ish, even if it's priced profitably, we could just be swamped with demand. Like, that's part of what killed us with MGT. I mean, still, we can only do 400 a month. This is the same thing. This could be an absolutely massive number. Ian. One other, one other thing just to consider, we're gonna be selling a bunch of stuff, pre-sales that we're gonna be fulfilling a year from now. Sure. Like, yeah. cost change over a year. We're like baking mm. in the cake right now. Like, we have mm. to live with that. Mm -hmm. So, if we're gonna be wrong, it would be good to be wrong a little bit to the upside. So again, we can stay in business. Like you said, that would be mm. nice. That would be nice. <laughs> uh. <laughs> We've always encountered more success than we anticipated. So if we just want to operate under that assumption, I know it's an optimistic assumption, but it seems like a safe bet. Uh, yeah, we make compelling, high quality stuff. Yeah, it's fucking kick ass. It's the best in the world. So fucking get over it. <laughs> How much work, cause that's what we're trying to do, right? We're yeah. trying to feed the monster we created so we can keep it alive. How much work do we want? Are we would, like, oh, like a, year. a year of work, whoo, awesome. We don't know how much bandwidth we have available in Pennsylvania. We also don't know how quickly we can scale up Massachusetts. You, you, like, we can't actually nail any of this down. And the thing is, once you open up the Kickstarter, you lose all control. We could have a situation where we price it aggressively and we still sell unbelievable 12, 12, volume. Backers. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, what if we figured out like the perfect price and the perfect amount of backers for the Kickstarter? and we limited it. So what do you mean? So you're gonna say, hey, there's one buy-in, $3,000 or yeah. 3,500. And guess what? We're only accepting 8,000 backers. Right? That's a great yeah. idea. So what you could say, no, is it, that, that is, that is uh, Galaxy Brain material. So. Material, you're not there yet. No, he is, no, he's, uh, <laughs> do the, come on, come on, do the Jimmy Neutron edit. Just do it, just do it right there. He's orbiting somewhere, like I don't know exactly. <laughs> but you're saying limit the number of backers to say, I don't know, 4,500, and then you set a price point. That's Everyone interesting. Everyone would jump right on it. This way we cannot get burned with volume. It's like, we'll have mm -hmm. a smaller Kickstarter, <laughs> Jeez, get right. the information we need to get off the ground, then we can launch it for real. So I think we're all in agreement. We have to limit the number of backers, whether it's 4,000 backers, 5,000 backers, 8,000 backers, 12,000 backers, then that commits us to the level of expansion we're willing to take on. I am pro 5,000 spots. I like that psychological. 5,000 is a great number. 5,000 spots, which remember, modular game table, we fucking did 8,000 whatever. And I think it should be a relatively high buy-in. I think $3,500 buy-in. The only risk with this is it's a cliff. That's a, that's a very high bar to jump up over. Yeah. You know, people sure. are like, oh, my budget was 3,000 and we lose 80% of our customers because of this. People spend over $1,000 on their damn GM screen. Yeah. I'm serious. No, people did it on dice. I get it. Well, <laughs> people spent $2,500 on one die. That is, okay, so like that is. Yeah, that's it. Okay, not 3500 There is no reason. Oh, another tier. It's just, thir yeah. that's $1,000 more than our average MGT. This is, sorry. $1,000 die? It's 2500 No. Yeah, that's a what? fucking walnut desk. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey, 19. Oh, yeah, no. yeah. That's a one nice nice job. G20. That, yeah. that is the, yes. yeah, that's the, <laughs> that's the right? yeah, no, I feel like what's gonna happen is like, day one, the Kickstarter's gonna be over. Yeah. And then Doug's gonna come in here and be like, <sighs> yeah, I know, <laughs> oh, can we maybe like double production and open it up? This thing could 
be bigger. Um, yeah, we, we, have to, we have to. We have to. I'm friendly. <laughs> it's all I'm friendly. friendly. Just for lulls, I am very much willing to accept 5,000 spots open at $3,500 buy-in. Then we'll see. We'll see if that fills up. It is the best fucking desk there is. It's the most innovative with the best craftsmanship, the best materials. It's fucking great. And the thing is, if it doesn't fill up, there's no reason we can't just open up another tier. I want 3,000 buy-in. Dude, you're a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> we can do 3,000, that's fine. If there's 5,000 spots at this buy-in, and then let's say, you know, after like four or five days, 4,000 people jumped in, then we could drop the buy-in and open up a tier for 1,000 to fill that up. But if, yeah, fundamentally, if on day one, 5,000 alpha gamers come in, dropping 3,000 to 3,500, then it's it. Yep, sorry, that's the end of the Kickstarter. Is there any gaming-related number that's like between 3,500 and 69? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the, here's what's gonna happen. It's launching 18th. October 18th. Nice. It is going to be a two week Kickstarter, 5,000 spots, $3,000 buy-in, and yeah, buckle up. Whoa, whoa. 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 Dang, that's so cool. The nerds are gonna love it. Mm. The nerds will love it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey. hey. What the?